Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to get emotive data into uh, basically Weka for analysis. And what we have here are two emotive data files. We have this baseline CSV and we have cat.csv. And essentially this was a person looking at a cat and we recorded their responses. And the baseline is a person um, basically just looking at, at a white screen. So if we open up baseline CSV, we can see what we have here. Uh, out of the emotive, we have the channel that it was recording on. Um, and the emotive has quite a few channels. And then we have uh, theta, alpha, low beta, high beta, and gamma waves. And what we found, um, of course, is we're going to have the most, or the most interesting data, let's say, is going to be in this low beta and high beta area. We can use all of this, but basically it's in the low beta, uh, high beta area. So we have these two files, baseline CSV that I just opened up and I'll, <laughs> I'm opening up again. Okay. So channel theta alpha, low beta, high beta, gamma. And then in, in the same, um, in the same file format, we have the same data just for the cat. And we've recorded this over time. So we have all of these entries and these are all of the channels. Um, I, I forget what the, the sample rate was, but I think it's every, uh, second or something like that. Okay. So, uh, we have this measurement out of every few seconds or second um, for these different things. So basically what we want to find out is, is there a difference or can we differentiate between the baseline and uh, cat uh, actually looking at or detecting the cat? Okay. So um, I have this both.csv and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what we want to do first, the first thing to do is um, essentially open up uh, Weka. So Weka, you can get, let me see if I can pull it up here. Okay, Weka is data mining software. Um, you can get it free from this website. Just go to download. This is cs.watico.ac.nz. Um, go ahead and download whatever version is suitable for your, your operating system. I'm currently using it in, Win, uh, in Linux, um, but it works the same in basically all of them. Okay, so uh, let me just open it up here. Okay, so once Weka uh, opens up, you'll have this uh, Weka GUI chooser. And one of the first things you might want to do, um, possibly, especially if you're dealing with uh, emotive data or any brainwave uh, analysis of data, um, is go to Tools and Package Manager. And then that pulls up your package manager here. And these are all the different packages that you can install. There's a bunch of uh, extra algorithms. For example, uh, liblinear is an interesting one, libsvm. Uh, if we want to install more algorithms or uh, just more basically features, uh, we can install it from the package manager. Package manager makes everything very easy. What you should search for is, um, uh, what was it called? Time series time series. And what should show up if we look at time series, I already have them installed. I think it's not going to show me again. But if we look for time or time series, then you should see time series packages, and there'll be two of them. And time series packages let you analyze this time series data uh, directly. We won't be doing uh, time series analysis today. We'll just be doing clustering today. But um, uh, definitely look into Weka's time series uh, packages. Okay. So next, once we have Weka open, we have all the packages or all of the uh, uh, algorithms that we want to use installed. Next, we need to go to Explorer, okay? And that will open up uh, basically a menu where you can um, open your data and also start to clean it. So I have my data files in uh, CSV format, okay? So my data is already in CSV and it is in desktop data, okay? Desktop data, and I click CSV, and then I have my baseline and my cat. And the first thing I want to do is understand a little bit about um, about my data. So I'm going to just load in the baseline first, click open, and uh, everything loaded up okay, it looks like. Um, we didn't get any errors immediately. Uh, if I click on each of the um, settings. I don't get an error inside any of these. These are just descriptive statistics about uh, basically the levels that it sees. Uh, we can see here um, the different values that each of the um, 
that each of the uh, basically wavelengths or um, frequency values um, are giving us down here. It gives us a little bit of an idea about what's going on, but not a lot. Okay, so um, we can also, something else that's potentially interesting is, for example, if we click on, like I said, we want to focus on low beta and high beta. So if we click on low beta, then we can see the mean is 38.7. Okay, if we click on high beta, then we can see the mean is 37. So I'm going to make a note of that. Okay, uh, opening up uh, just a text, text document. High beta, I'll say high and 37. Low, high 37, low of uh, 38, okay? And that might be interesting. Uh, we need to, whenever we're, whenever we're analyzing some other information, that might be interesting. Now, just with the baseline data, um, basically that's what I was interested in. What is our mean here What is, for uh, at least low beta and high beta, okay? And I'll show you what we can do with that in a second. Okay, so now I wanna open up, my, uh, open up another file and I have this cat CSV. And this file is where the user was actually looking at a cat. And I want to differentiate between not doing anything and looking at a cat. So I open that up. And because it's in the same format, we get hopefully everything loads up again. And we can see all of the instances we have. Uh, I'm going to focus again on low beta. And we see that our mean for low beta is 42. So I have my mean low beta for 42. And I have my mean for high beta, 123. Okay. Now, this is already somewhat important because whenever we're looking at the cat, I mean, just between the baseline and between the cat, I have a high beta average, a high beta, a high beta average, or the mean high beta is actually much, much greater. Now, what, what exactly is this? Um, if we look back in our data, uh, we look at it. Okay, so we have low beta, high beta, and then we have all of these channels. Now, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, we are actually looking at all of this column for low beta, all of this low beta column combined, the average overall out of all of these channels, right? We didn't actually uh, filter out based on channel. We're just looking at only the channel. At, we're looking at all channels all data from all the channels. If we wanted to focus on a particular channel, for example, um, I think PZ was the back of the head, right? So whenever we're doing uh, image pattern recognition, PZ might be the most interesting. So we might need to remove or somehow filter out all of these other channels and just focus on PZ, okay? But right now, we're just loading in all of this data and including all of the channels, low beta and high beta together. We're averaging all of these different things, okay? Now, from the, that average, we are getting uh, a relatively high mean for low beta, uh, no, for high beta, sorry, for high beta whenever we are looking at a cat. So the average for high beta is much greater whenever we're looking at the cat than whenever we're not looking at the cat. Okay, so this means that we might actually have a pattern we can detect. So it's already looking somewhat interesting, actually. Okay, so I'm going to focus then on only high beta. Okay, and what I want to do is see if I can make a classifier, see if I can make a classifier that will be able to differentiate between not looking at a cat, just looking at nothing, basically, looking at the baseline, which we can just call nothing, or looking at the cat. Okay, I want to try to figure out if I can differentiate that uh, using machine learning or just find it automatically, essentially. Um, so one of the things we're going to try to do today is clustering um, to, to see if we can detect the differences. Okay, so using just the means, I've already figured out I want to focus on high beta because I see a, a difference, a big difference in the mean. For low beta, I see a little bit of a difference, but not much, right? So um, it could just be noise. It could be, it, who knows what it could be. But with high, it looks like it's actually um, uh, quite a bit of a difference, okay? Now, whenever I want to start clustering, whenever I want to automatically uh, detect or pull out these things, um, I, I need to combine cat and baseline together into one file, obviously, okay? So uh, before, I, before I forget, which I already forgot, before I forget, um, looking at all this data, once we've actually loaded this in, we can do uh, this, in this visualized tab, 
you might be interested to look at it. So um, what I tend to do first, one of the first things I do, not only looking at the mean, um, but also looking at the actual um, uh, graphs of all of these different uh, uh, different patterns, essentially. So here we have, uh, for example, high beta. I can see that I have kind of a cluster here and some, some extra data uh, at higher values. I have a cluster. Um, relatively low and then I have some a little bit of data spread out a little bit higher and same uh, same for versus low beta so I have um, I have some kind of interesting patterns here now if we go back to pre-process open up the baseline and then go back to visualize then I look at it again and if we look through high beta well uh, this uh, high beta versus theta um, is maybe almost the same uh, high beta versus alpha is almost the same uh, low beta looks a little bit different. So I just basically go through and, and visualize all the data um, initially to get an idea of where is the data falling for the baseline, where is the data falling for looking at the cat. Okay, so just uh, think about this visualize tab. Um, just go through both of your data sets and see if anything kind of jumps out at you. Um, that's That's one way that I start. Okay, so I'm going to go back, and right now we need to combine our cat data with our baseline data, and I've put both of these into the both category. Um, in Linux, what we can do, um, you can do cat, which just means uh, concatenate, baseline, baseline.csv, and then uh, one uh, uh, greater than sign into both.csv and this basically takes everything that's inside baseline csv and puts it into both.csv okay then i'm going to do echo and echo a blank space into both csv and here i'm using two greater than signs the first one overwrites all the data in the file basically makes a new file and, and puts data inside of it the second one appends so i've appended an empty line into both.csv or I'm appending it, okay? So now this both.csv has baseline, everything that was in baseline, plus uh, an, an empty line, okay? So the next thing I wanna do is cat, cat.csv, so uh, basically take all the data inside cat.csv, and we need to do something special with it. Um, I need to do tail-in and plus two, I, I, I think it was, and what this does, is uh, actually I'll I'll check to make sure it's working. <laughs> okay, yeah. So what this does is um, let me let me remove it. Cat CSV head. Okay, so here at the beginning we have this uh, channel theta alpha low beta high beta gamma. We want to remove this before we put it into the file. So we need to use tail uh, um, dash in plus two. Um, and basically it lists out all of the data without this heading. We want to remove that heading, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that into my both file. So here we have both CSV. So I have cat, cat.csv, and then pipe that to tail-in plus two, uh, greater than, greater than both.csv. Okay, hit enter. And then uh, if we do cat baseline, CSV and then WC-L, we can see how many lines are in baseline. We have 4,359. Now if we do, instead of baseline, we do cat both.csv, then we have a lot more. So it should be cat plus baseline. Um, yeah, so that, that should be it. So we know that we actually have all of the data inside both.csv, okay? So now I can go back to Weka, open up my file, both.csv, open. Okay, now we have as many records as we expect to find, right? We still have all of the same uh, attributes, um, but we're not really interested in anything else except high beta. I'm, I'm really looking at it, um, pulling out patterns specifically with high beta. So I'm going to remove uh, everything else. Just select everything you don't want to include and click this remove button. Okay. So then I have high beta only, and this is all of my data. I can already see that there's uh, you know, quite a few entries here, and then there's something going on here. I don't know what that is, but uh, you know, it's something's happening, okay? Um, right, and then I want to go to cluster, because I'm going to try to, to do some basic clustering. Then uh, instead of EM, I'm going to choose, what do we have? Uh, simple k-means. 
K-means is an interesting, a very simple <laughs> type of clustering. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a relatively effective way. It's a very interesting algorithm. I won't talk about it here, but um, I recommend you read up on it because it is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, we do want to use a training set. Um, right. And that's pretty much it. Just select simple K-means with your data, uh, your combined data. And then if we click start, Okay, now it's going through and it found two clusters with about 5,369 entries each just with high beta. Uh, yeah, high beta. So we only have high beta um, and it found two different clusters. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. We were expecting two different clusters. Let's see what we got here. Uh, cluster 1, uh, 99. Cluster 2, 83. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically we have... Uh, high beta, whenever the value is relatively large, it's cluster zero. Whenever the value is relatively small, it's cluster one. Okay. Now, if we right click on simple K means, then we can visualize cluster assignments. Okay. And then that pulls up this box. Okay. And we have cluster zero is this top cluster here, and cluster one is the bottom cluster. Now, if we go back and look at our mean, uh, let's just focus on high for now. Okay, we have high of 123, and 123 is about here, right, for the mean. Uh, and then we have, uh, or sorry, the, um, uh, the cat. The cat is about 123, and it's about here. So all everything kind of above 123 was clustered as the cat. And then everything around 37, which is probably about here, more or less, uh, was clustered as the um, uh, uh, kind of baseline, essentially. So we have uh, this information. Well, basically what, what this tells us is that we seem, we seem to be able to differentiate uh, automatically between uh, the baseline and someone looking at the cat, right? Um, now, with this information, we could basically go in and start to do some... Um, uh, categorization, try to detect um, specifically uh, when this is happening, or if we saw some data that looked like this, would it be a cat or would it be something else? So essentially what we're just looking at here is can we automatically differentiate between this baseline and uh, looking at something else uh, through brainwaves? And it looks like we're getting a, you know, a, it seems like we're probably getting a, a pretty good uh, cluster here. Um, about where we would expect. Okay, so the next thing I would probably do now uh, is go to uh, classifiers and try to make a, cl uh, a classifier. I would have to change the data slightly, but using a classifier, I might be able to um, classify or detect new data coming in, or we can potentially just keep using clusters depending on what your data actually looks like. So um, I thought this was pretty interesting. We're using uh, just very basic data to kind of go through and say, you know, can we differentiate between two uh, two different things? And it looks like our our clusters were pretty accurate um, between our high data for looking at the cat and low data for not looking at the cat. Uh, so that's it for um, how we can do simple k-means over emotive data. Um, thank you very much.